What happens in the sky affects life down here on Earth. The celestial compass shows you how and guides your way with astrology you can use from professional astrologer Kathy Beale. Every episode features her light-hearted practical forecasts and navigational tips, blended with humor, optimism, and a love of patterns, symbolism, and pop culture references. Kathy translates technicalities into concepts that apply to real life. You'll learn how the current moment ties to where we've been, from the recent past to cycles that last happened years ago, and get a look at where we're heading. And much more, from special topics to special guests. The Celestial Compass, enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. Here's your host, Kathy Beale. Greetings, Earthlings. I'm Kathy Beale of EmpowermentUnlimited.net, welcoming you to Celestial Compass. I usually start my episode with an update of the astrological forecast. I will refer you to my forecasts at EmpowermentUnlimited.net and also OMTimes.com because today we're going to talk about the big event of September and beyond. And I'm very happy to welcome back Louise Eddington, brief intro for those who are new to her work. She's been studying and practicing astrology for more than 30 years and working professionally as an evolutionary shamanic astrologer since 2012, known as the Cosmic Owl of Cosmic Owl Astrology. And you see that the owl is in the house. Louise <laughs> loves to combine all of her passions as an astrologer, author, shamanic practitioner, and certified hypnotherapy and past life regression therapist. She's the author of The Complete Guide to Astrology in Tarot, The Complete Guide to Astrology, and Modern Astrology, Harness the Stars to Discover Your Soul's True Purpose. Hey, Louise. Hey, nice to be here. <laughs> oh, oh, so we're going to just be talking about eclipses mm -hmm. uh, today. Uh, and I just want to start with the the odd notion that an elderly astrologer I know who's been practicing for decades and decades and decades is actually terrified of eclipses, which I find astonishing. Uh, they are extraordinarily useful and revealing in my experience and practice. And I'm just wondering at the outset, how do you use eclipses? I love eclipses. You know, it's like they are revealing and they're kind of resets. And, uh, you know, we did see that the big eclipse of 2017, the Great American Eclipse, did split the country in two politically, but it also revealed a lot of what needs needed to be changed. And I've, when eclipses have hit my own chart and clients' charts, in a big way they've only uh, brought good things really i think they bring opportunities i do not fear them at all <laughs> I, I welcome them i see them as bringing issues back around again for revisiting and and resetting i use reset and i i see a solar eclipse as installing a new operating system yeah and a lunar eclipse as uh ending chapters revealing what's been going on outside your field of vision and mm -hmm. booting things yeah definitely yeah and we have some big ones coming up so we, we well. have some big ones coming now <laughs> we've been operating since march of 2023 with eclipses and the signs of aries and libra and now, i have my opinions about what they've been doing what have you seen well, I've seen real kind of new beginnings, which is Aries and Libra. You know, they're cardinal signs. I've seen, you know, new starts for a lot of people, or at least the seeds of new starts that are going to unfold over New Year's. A new kind of, um, uh, let's, let's, because we're on air publicly, <laughs> let's choose my language. A new way of, you know, not uh, people pleasing anymore and not uh, uh, kind of taking a stand more for ourselves and standing up for ourselves, which is very Aries North Node, and getting clearer on what we want, I think, really. And, um, uh, but also being prepared 
you know, I don't think I want to make the south node in Libra all bad either, which because the eclipses are always new and full moons on the nodes. Um, I don't um, I don't think we I think we're learning to come together and speak to each other again as well, which is the positive side of Libra. I've seen these as um, bringing our relationship rule books up for reconsideration and encouraging mm -hmm. people to stop playing the Libra game of trying to figure everything out at the outset and to set things up in a way that you think someone else is going to want to try to get buy in and instead mm -hmm. to just do your own thing mm -hmm. towards the Aries end of it and figure that other people will take care of themselves. And it's fascinating. This eclipse cycle is mostly solar eclipses. It is. Yes. Yeah. Very different and, from what we're moving into. Yeah. And very big ones. I was lucky enough to see the, um, yeah. Yeah, the uh, April the 8th one. I went to Texas to see that. And uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, let's, shall we dive into what they are? Or do you want to explain more about what eclipses are and cycles? Or shall we go into that first? Oh, whatever you feel would be important to say. Well, you know, I think it's important that people know that eclipses come in cycles, you know. Uh, there the are two cycles, there's Saros and Metonica. I don't think we have time to explain what all that means. But this eclipse, this big solar eclipse that we have coming up, um, that's October the 2nd, is almost exactly the same place as the an eclipse in 2005. So we'll look back at that. We're also looking at the shift between eclipses going into, you know, from Aries and Libra into Virgo and Pisces and that's very significant um, in the summer of 68 so we're going to look at that a bit as well but that also ties in with that 19 year cycle because in 67 that was the 19 year cycle leading into 68 so eclipse cycles are very significant and but I think this one shifting from Aries into Libra back into Pisces and Virgo is always kind of the bigger shift because you're moving from Aries North Node, the first sign of the Zodiac, back into the last sign of the Zodiac. And they're so very different. I always feel that this shift has something, some more oomph towards it. What do you think? Well, clearly we're going from, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this being catapulted i've been seeing booster rockets being mm -hmm. catapulted into being more self-determining self-actualizing just yeah. going ahead and going for it to reminders of oh wait a minute we are all together exactly uh -oh. <laughs> what are we gonna do with this so to to give some details here the next mm -hmm. eclipse cycle starts in september so we're going to have two overlapping cycles mm -hmm. the aries libra one doesn't wrap up until March. Mm -hmm. And this new one starts and is going to be with us until March of 2027. Mm -hmm. And this new one is in the signs of Virgo and Pisces. And it starts with a lunar eclipse, the full moon in Pisces, conjunct mm -hmm. Neptune, the ruler of Pisces. We could talk yeah. for the next hour about that sentence. Oh, gosh, we could, but we've got more to say than that because. Uh, the annular eclipse that's on October the 2nd at 10 degrees Libra is a set, is over seven minutes long. So I think we need to leave space for that. And it's uh, conjunct Mercury. Which is so uh, <laughs> what we have coming this month, we're already feeling because eclipses start, you can notice them ahead of time. Uh, let's, let's start with the What's the difference in what's being re-examined when we move from Aries Libra to Pisces Virgo? Yeah, individuality, self-determination. Um, I really think we've been on a path of finding out really who we are now in this kind of shifting time what we're in, which is you know a whole other thing to go into. I, I, you know, I feel I've changed personally. I've got kind of stronger in my kind of core self and my values. And I see it with all my clients. But now, as as you said, we're moving into this Pisces of 
remembering that we're all in this together. And, you know, I've, uh, I don't want to go too deep into the politics, but you can hear it already, you know, in the words of Kamala Harris. She keeps saying, we're all in this together. We're all in this together. You know? And so I think we are realising this and um, and people are starting to kind of shift together. And that will be in all areas of life as well, though, I think. I think we're seeing also a shift into realising that we're in this together with with nature and the cosmos as well. And, and um, Pisces is such an interesting sign to me. And, um, you know, it really is that interconnectedness of everything, the cosmic soup of creation, if you like. And then Virgo on the opposite side is how we bring that down to earth to create meaningful work in the world and, uh, and more there's humble also, beginnings, you know. There's also the uh, element of boundaries with yeah. with, <laughs> with Virgo. I'm so sorry. My mm -hmm. sinuses have just have decided that right now they want to be active. How Piscean of them. Stop it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but but uh, Virgo is ruled by Mercury, mental, intellectual, discriminating, think about things, look mm -hmm. at life as an improvement project. What can I do about this? Uh, easy to see what is wrong. Neptune, mm -hmm. uh, Pisces ruled by Neptune or in traditional astrology, Jupiter, which has this boundless quality to it. It's more like faith, mm -hmm. belief, yeah. shutting the mind down and just becoming one. And trusting that, you know, all those kind of things yeah it's um but also a lot of um cleansing i always think virgo pisces the whole axis has this kind of real cleansing and purifying um element to it as well with pisces being a water sign kind of washing away um and then virgo again you know really kind of getting down to the nuts and bolts of the chop wood carry water kind of energy of right what are we going to do now what are we <laughs> you know make work and i find it interesting that you know people have started already taking a shift towards more kind of humble working class um kind of uh, that approach to life like you know um, humble beginnings, let's get down to nuts and bolts, what the people really want them in their lives, um, in everywhere, you know. <laughs> Somebody, someone, I ran across a meme this morning that I, I sent to uh, one of my usual suspects that says, somewhere a Virgo is making life better for you. <laughs> Yes, I saw that one too. I love that one. Yeah, I had to send that to my resident Virgo. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have some very favorite Virgos in this world. You know, I'm actually, I'm actually going to see one on um, on September the third. Um, Keanu Reeves with his band Dog Star. He's one of my favorite Virgos. Oh, lucky you, lucky he's you. Always, he's always doing good for people, you know, and he's such a humble guy. You know, I love Virgo. <laughs> Yeah. And there's a nice little snark with it sometimes too. But anyway, that's yeah. not part of that's yes. not part of the full moon. So a full moon culminates the kind of so we have a full moon in Pisces. Uh, so there's like a really huge boundless quality. Full mm -hmm. lunar eclipses tend to be full moons on steroids times a hundred times a thousand when Neptune's ruling it. When Neptune is conjunct it, Lord <laughs> knows uh, what your do you have any expectations? There we go. Do you have any expectations of the full moon that's the lunar eclipse that's going to set this family off? I I kind of feel like it as kind of this big kind of sudden, well, sudden or illumination of this real interconnectedness. It's like almost like um, eyes wide open suddenly going, oh, my God, yeah, we are connected to all of this, like the cosmos, each other everything and of course eclipses unfold over some time but you know it's a big full moon um and um and so i really do kind of think a lot more people are suddenly kind of going to get this spiritual for want of a better word um um awakening i don't know i hate those words but you know i can't think of any better ones at the moment you know it's mm -hmm. it's just this big cosmic consciousness kind of like oh wow yes everything works together 
<laughs> one of those moments when you look in the sky and suddenly you see God everywhere. And these, yeah. these moments do happen. They do. Yeah. And, and this one is absolutely huge in that respect. You know, it's because um, Neptune is the modern guide to Pisces or ruler, whichever term you prefer to use. Uh, we've also got Saturn, you know, retrograde in Pisces. I think Saturn retrograde in Pisces has been letting go of a lot of those old boundaries and rules. It's going to feel like the cosmos is boundless, I think. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Well, there's yeah. so many aspects to this one. And, 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 and keep in mind, everyone, that this is what is launching. This is the champagne bottle hitting yes. the ocean liner of this eclipse family. Yes. So there's something very, very important to it. And mm -hmm. what strikes me, what jumps out at me is Neptune being conjuncted and mm -hmm. Neptune nearing the end of its time in Pisces. Mm -hmm. So I am expecting, although expecting when you've got Neptune is kind of like, oh, you foolish mortal. But uh, I'm, I'm expecting there to be a huge component of seeing what's been going on. Oh. Since Neptune entered Pisces in April of 2011, getting yeah. massive revelations about like the parting. Or yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and the Sun, of course, opposing it from Virgo, kind of going, "Oh, now that makes sense." <laughs> Let's add to this that we're just confusing everybody here, but Pluto, which Sorry. I see as an uh, an agent of unavoidable change making its final visit to the sign of Capricorn is in a sextile or an opportunity aspect mm -hmm. to this. So I think that adds to the piercing revelatory probabilities yeah. of this particular eclipse. And to confuse it even more, <laughs> we've still, we've got that mini grand trine between Pluto, Uranus and Neptune who are all changing signs over the next couple of years into um, air and fire signs from earth and water signs. And they're all speaking to each other. So it's a major kind of ending and new beginnings coming with all of this. And some of it will be quite dynamic and powerful, I think as well. So you don't, I don't think you need to understand the aspects just to know that, you know, it's all kind of coming to this big culmination. And there's a huge moment of seeing what's been going on behind the curtain that is possible with this. That really excites me. <laughs> and then we have a couple of years of playing it out. And, and I want to point out that I, I mentioned that the Aries Libra eclipses, which we're not done with. There's yep. a big one in October. There's the final one in March. Those mm -hmm. have been mostly solar eclipses, mostly forward propelling uh, events, most of the eclipses in this next family are lunar eclipses, which are culminations and endings and booting yeah. things out. Yeah. So we're going to see a lot of endings over the next couple of years. And and Pisces, I always think of as, as just kind of let go and let God, if you like, as well. It's another term for it. If you, if you want to, you know, it's such a, one of Pisces, I always think of that. There's another meme going around. You mentioned a meme of somebody trying to uh, kind of create a wall between the ocean and the beach. <laughs> like hammering <laughs> in, in these pegs at the end of the of the wave as it joins the beach and trying to hold back the tide. You can't. It's um, <laughs> it's, it's so big. So. Well, okay, though so that this brings to mind let, let's talk a bit about recurrences with this because every time an eclipse cycle comes back around you can look back to the previous cycle and the cycles before it and the um eclipses in pisces and virgo were last 2005 to 2007 is that right yes yes they were and yeah. and you mentioned before we went live something really big that happened in 2005 uh in katrina <laughs> yeah so you know i would say if you're in hurricane alley i would you know make sure you're very well protected because i think 
you know, there's going to be that big kind of cleansing storms in many ways. And some of it, you know, uh, be positive and some of it will, it depends on your perspective as well. So, you know, but I do think, you know, the likelihood, and, we, and we've seen already that storms are getting bigger. So, you know, I, I think there's probably going to be some bigger weather storms. You can see weather coming in astrology as well. So would you agree with that one? Oh, I just think this first eclipse near the end of Pisces conjunct Neptune at the end of the Zodiac has mm. tsunami written all over it. I mean, I water so. events, the ocean just oh. coming, yep. coming, coming. And I live close enough where it could hit me. So uh, you mm. don't, but I do. <laughs> I've had yeah. that. So uh, the fact that this is during actual hurricane season we should oh, take yeah. this very seriously and think of what happened after Katrina. All right. That certain towns, certain cities had a huge, people had to relocate huge mm -hmm. amounts of New Orleans moved into Houston uh, yeah. in a, in a football stadium, I think. And, and people just relocated and relocated and relocated. I'm not sure New Orleans has completely recovered yet no, from Katrina. I no, I don't think it has. And um, so, you know, anywhere that's susceptible to that, please kind of have a plan. I think really, I, I don't think, I don't believe in kind of, uh, you know, living in this petrified kind of fear. I, I believe in planning and preparation and being aware. So uh, take that approach in my opinion. So, And, and I'll just weave in here a, a thought that goes back to the, all the outer planets playing into this. Uh, and mm -hmm. that is, uh, please pay attention to your dreams these days. Oh, Pisces yeah. rules dreams, Neptune rules dreams. And, and I don't mean the sitting on the, you know, sitting on the porch and looking out at the sky, although those could be good, but mm -hmm. you could be getting really important information in your dreams. Mm -hmm. I've, I've talked to clients who've had astonishing dreams I, that, where the symbolism has hit them over the head. And if you experience this, I have to, yeah, and even um, uh, what I would call, you know, people who are very, um, well, I think we are all psychically attuned if we um, let ourselves explore it, but for example, I've got a friend who's a psychic medium, and I've just interviewed her on my YouTube channel, and we've been friends for a long time. She said, you know, the messages coming through now are just, like, so powerful, so whatever space you need to put yourself um, in to receive that dreams, um, you know, um, tuning into your, for want of better word, psychic awareness. I think we all are. We can tune in. Uh, they're gonna. You're gonna get some very important revelations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there could be useful, and there could be amazing art that comes out of this. Oh, amazing absolutely. stories. Amazing new myths, who knows? Or you might yeah. start looking at everything that's going on out in the world from an archetypal standpoint. It might, you might feel like we're living in a bunch of Greek myths, which we might be. We are. Well, quantum scientists are wondering if we're actually kind of real. You know? <laughs> so, you know, Neptune and Pisces is very much associated with film and, and art and create that kind of glimmery, glittery creativity. So, uh, yeah, I'm. I I really kind of hope that this is bringing the end of the disaster movie trend because I'm just like we've done that. Yeah, we we've done that. It's you know. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Hmm. And brings brings a bit more magic back in. You know. <laughs> We're overdue for some good magic films. Um, yeah. We had touched on, we had started with the notion of recurrences and uh, the, what happened in 2005. There is another earlier cycle that many of us live through uh, that is at play now. In the summer of 1968, we were in the lead into an overlap. We were in Aries Libra eclipses and that fall, Pisces Virgo eclipses started. Yeah, yeah. What, um, and a lot was going on then. Well, the summer of '68 uh, keeps being coming back up for so many reasons. Um, 
not least of which we've um, you know got Uranus and Pluto speaking to each other as well and that was a Uranus Pluto conjunction it was but 68 was particularly crazy you know we had the um, assassination of um, Martin Luther King Jr um, there was uh, um, all kinds of there was a battle there was Vietnam War there was civil rights coming up um, there was all the um, um, fighting and protesting at the Democratic Convention in 68, but which, which was in Chicago, which was in Chicago and people Same and, city as now. <laughs> a lot of astrologers predicted similar things happening. I saw people saying it was going to be doom and gloom because it was. Um, but sure enough, it wasn't, you know, there was, I think there was one fence pushed over. You know? <laughs> it was like, and uh, but there was riots after the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, the Civil Rights Act was signed. And, you know, clearly we've seen some reversals on, on that one uh, recently. Uh, the, oh, in UK, you know, I don't want to, because I'm from the UK, there was a politician in the UK called Enoch Powell who did a oh, yeah. Rivers of Blood speech, if somebody wants to go and look that up. That was pretty horrific at the time too. So, um, and, you know, anti-immigration in the UK. We All this is up again, to be quite honest. Um, you know, the themes, you know. The but, themes. I always think history doesn't repeat it rhymes. So the themes come up again. And yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have more to say about this in just a few minutes. We'll take our break now. Everybody hang tight. We'll be back. Home Times TV. Want help with your own celestial compass? Visit my site, empowermentunlimited.net, for Astro Insight forecasts for each week, month, and new and full moon. Want to explore the personal impact? Make a decision? Understand another person? <laughs> it is possible. Click the Services tab to book a personal session with me. That address again? Empowermentunlimited.net Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust, spheric approach. Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Ohm Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Ohm Times Magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a, a mile, mile in my shoes. shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back to Celestial Compass. We're talking today with the Cosmic Owl of Cosmic Owl Astrology, Louise Eddington, and we're talking about eclipses. And right before the break, we touched on the fact that the current switchover in eclipses from Aries Libra to Pisces Virgo uh, happened right during, or the summer of 1968 presaged that. So what we've just come through is like a recurrence of that kind of vibe and that was an enormously uh catalytic volatile time in u.s history robert f kennedy was shot then as well or assassinations yeah. uh, in the news now <laughs> in the news now exactly um 
So this does not mean, that, well, clearly, clearly there was a Democratic National Convention with police brutality, protesters, people getting their heads bashed in, including newscasters in uh, Chicago in August of 1968. This time around, August of 2024, very, very different things happened. Very so different. you read all these. And, and the assassinations were before these eclipses. Too. Right. They were before. They were before. So if you read all these dynamic, horrible things that the violence that happened in 68, we just have common themes now, not necessarily the same events. Yeah. In fact, I would suggest in some ways, because I do believe in the cycles, um, rhyming, not repeating, that we're revisiting them and perhaps being invited to do them in a different way because yes. of, because we're in um, a time where all the other planets are in different places as well. That's basically, <laughs> yeah. Well, and interestingly, there was, you had mentioned, Uranus and Pluto were conjunct in the mid to late 60s in the sign of Virgo. Mm -hmm. And so there are people who were born with that in their chart. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing, well, they've been prominent, but yeah, but that well, convention definitely activated somebody who's got it. <laughs> well, and and her VP. Yeah. 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 But he's he's born under, in the middle of it. Yeah, oh, she, hers is so close. Two degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So we're seeing a different way of interacting with everything, of community, uh, which which leads me to one other thing that happened during that uh, Pisces Virgo eclipses that started in 68. I'd like to just remember, remind people, Woodstock happened in 69 and huge. I think it is the largest violence free gathering of people and it went on for days now it was they ended up victimizing themselves they overran the grounds the townspeople had to feed all these kids yeah. that showed up completely unprepared but those people lived for three days mm -hmm. without anybody stabbing anybody shooting anybody throttling anybody there was no violence Mm. And that happened during this. And that's an example of the Piscean, you know, we're love, all together. Love and peace. You love know. And peace. Yeah. Music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Music brought them all together. Flower power. <laughs> kind of thing. And, you know, we could see an emergence, you know, it won't be the same again, but that kind of, you know, putting a flower in the end of a, a, a you know, the tip of the barrel of a gun. You know, and, and that kind of, um, and, and again, we see it coming. I have a friend who was in Chicago for the Democratic Convention. She was outside it, though. She was in the protests. But she said it was peaceful. It was very loving. You know, so. That coming. potential is with us, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. So let's look, let's look specifically at. Mm -hmm. September and October, because mm -hmm. even though we have a lunar eclipse and then a solar eclipse, there is kind of a thematic commonality between an eclipse in Pisces and eclipse in Libra. Does that sound far-fetched? Uh, could you explain what you mean by that? What I mean is each of them has, each of them immerses us in some way in the fact that we're not alone, that oh, there are definitely. other considerations. Oh, absolutely. You know, Libra is you know, our, Aries is kind of our identity and Libra is relationships. And then Virgo and Pisces, Pisces is kind of the greater relationships. And Virgo is um, kind of holistic health and, and individual kind of mind, body, spirit health. So they've got that, you know, same vibe, definitely relationships of how we relate to others in both individual relationships and the greater relationships. Yeah. It's almost as if the Aries Libra eclipses have been firing each of us up, mm -hmm. uh, giving us fueling our inner 
I don't know what word I want to use, fire, gusto, life force. Yeah. And and now we're alongside others. It's not like yeah. we're just off by ourselves with our little jet packs. By the way, yeah. I still want my little jet packs fly around. Exactly. <laughs> we promise them. So this kind of me, me, me kind of, you know, um, it's all about me energy is is definitely dissipating because of these two series of eclipses and the shift into Virgo and Pisces is even bringing um I think particularly with the Pisces energy coming in is starting to see others with a bit more compassion so there's less separation people are starting to see each other more kindly and say, you know, this forgiveness, that's another Pisces word, I think, coming in as well, you know, in, in all areas of life. Forgiveness, compassion, empathy. Yeah. Those are big ones. Yeah. Yeah. And we need that point. <laughs> but I'm so, but I see it already coming in for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I'm I'm very interested in politics, but um, so if it's not your thing, I'm only using these as examples. But um, the fact that um, they had Kissinger, um, Kissinger um, speak on the final day of the um, Democratic Convention, not long before the new nominee, was a whole different vibe and shift and. And this was kind of more about just let's come together and see where we can find the common ground. You know? So be kind. Yeah, there people. is a lot of that going on. And that's possible in your own. Exactly. Possible in your own lives. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing it in my life. I just, you know, I, I love to give examples of where it's showing in out in the world so people can then go and look and go in their own lives. Oh, I see this coming, you know. I've, I've already, over the last eclipses and the coming ones, reconnected with with some people I haven't connected with for quite a long time because we've been in this huge time of separation as well. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we're Another cycle that has coincided with this is the first square between Jupiter and Saturn, which were conjunct, in December uh, 2020, right? And so there, uh, it's so yeah. we were all very, very isolated and separated mm -hmm. at, when they were conjunct, and now we're testing. And there's the fact that the last couple of, well, just the difference between this Democratic National Convention and the one where everything was via Zoom. Yes. There yes. was an exuberance of we are all in one room. Yeah. Let's have a party, Yay. which which is also a bit Pisces to my mind. It's kind of let go. Everybody was crying, you know, which is very Pisces as well because it's an emotional water sign. Um, one other factor I think that makes this time very different to sixty eight. There's so many differences. Is that uh, fixed star Regulus from our perspective? shifted into um, Virgo from Leo at the end of 2011. This is the first Pisces Virgo eclipses with um, fixed star Regulus in the sign of Virgo. And um, I think that's making a huge difference because that's after 2000 and 2160 years in Leo, the sign of the king, <laughs> you know, the royalty. So that is an excellent observation mm. yeah all right well so maybe we're in saner times i don't know we'll see uh, well, i i do think we are i think we're moving into kind of this more kind of humble doing the right thing which is the positive side of virgo i, I you know there's many other shifts as well of course um, as we mentioned briefly, with all those slower moving planets, all changing signs at the same time together, we're moving into something that's very different to what we've been living ever, probably in history, to be quite honest. So, <laughs> oh, 
would agree. I would agree. And we'll see yeah. that much more starting yeah. three or four months into next year. Um, before we get done, let's look specifically at the solar eclipse in, uh, in Libra in October. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't look at the past. Have you looked at the past? But the but just the astrology of it, I think I mentioned already that it's a big one. It's over seven minutes long. It's an annular eclipse, so that's the ring of fire. So it's a total, but with but the moon doesn't quite cover the whole face of the sun. Um, and um, it's at 10 degrees Libra, which I know you and I both like numbers, so that's a one, new beginnings. It's a south node eclipse, so it's endings and beginnings to my mind. So, um, And it's conjunct Mercury, which is at 11 degrees Libra. Funny that we're recording this as Mercury, just stationed direct. Yes. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think this is um, a new beginning. In, so it's also conjunct true black moon list if people use black moon list um black moon oh, can is you elaborate different... on that well black moon list is is obviously uh, connected with the moon cycle it's n it's not a physical body it's um uh, it's associated with the moon cycle for want of a better word but black moon list in astrology is is thought to be kind of the real raw elemental feminine kind of energy the wild feminine that was that has been, uh, you know, uh, um, demonized basically for centuries <laughs> by the patriarchy, not just men, because patriarchy hurts men as well, but by that hierarchical culture, which we've been under for so, so long. I think that is ending, you know, I just... Well, we see women rising up for a start, not only um, in um, politics, but in many ways, women are just saying, no, we're not, we're not going back. We're not going in the corner. This is time for a new beginning, a new way. But because of everything else, I, I could almost see this eclipse launching because things take a while to come out. <laughs> launching something so new that's much more feminine matriarchal for want of a better word but also more kind of circular kind of um i think i i've long thought there could even be amendments to cook the constitution and things like definitely the era and voting rights and things like that but i also wonder if they'll kind of um change the hierarchy of governments to make them more um, circular in nature <laughs> you know what I mean it's mm -hmm. truly anything is possible particularly mm -hmm. if there's an eclipse with Neptune on it right before to clear yeah. the way so uh and it's fascinating uh Pisces is a it's a it's a feminine energy. Then we have a Venus ruled eclipse, yeah, in October. That's also a feminine energy. And uh, Venus, both... uh, Venus on the eclipse is at eleven degrees Scorpio, incidentally. So she's sem she's in a semi sextile aspect to the eclipse. That's um, you know. Now, what do you so, see that as doing? Um, well, in Scorpio, I kind of see it of a, a kind of a release, a letting go or a new beginning in in kind of the sexual dynamic politics. And, you know, I think we're going to regain our, it's also sexual um, health care, you know, reproductive health care. Um, so I think that's going to get encoded into law, um, um, federal law and um, I, but of course, it's not just about the USA, it's happening everywhere. So, uh, you know, I think to quote the Dalai Lama, Western women will save the world. I think what happens here will ripple out everywhere. So I just see it as so positive, such a new beginning. Um, everything about it shows me that, to be quite honest. What about you? <laughs> well. I just want to caution people that there's always volatility when eclipses oh. are at play. Oh, always. absolutely. 
I'm so, talking about the long term. Oh, long time. Right. So that yeah. what but my, my point being that whatever if surface events are going on in September mm-hmm. and October, maybe even November, it's not the end of the story. No. There's a process. There's a process that's in motion. And uh, we'll see more by March. And then we'll see more over the next couple of years. Uh, And everything is interconnected. But these are just big, big, big cleaning Mm. up, clearing out, and then, okay, reset button, whoosh, uh, moments. You can look at Libra as being the social contract, how we we are agreeing that we're going to do things. Justice. Legislation. Justice. How we handle the courts. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's yes. Topic. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Won't know any more. Say any more about that. But of course, you know, because it's an eclipse, um, it is a Libra eclipse. But the North Node is still in Aries, which is Mars, Mars ruled, and that's in Cancer um, at fifteen degrees on the eclipse, which is conjunct the Sun of the USA in September, which is at thirteen Cancer. So, but I also always kind of see Mars in Cancer, Mars in water signs as really kind of softening the energy of Mars. And, but also it can be overprotective because, uh, you know, and I think there's still going to be the resistance, of course, like, you know, we we like things the way we are. We don't want this new beginning. And, you know, those people that are very stuck kind of in how it was. People or how they wish it had been. People. How they wish it had been. It's a fantasy. Yes. Oh, it is um, a fantasy. Yeah. But you know, they're gonna feel threatened, you know, I think with Mars in Cancer, that this is going they're going, you know, I don't like the way this is going. So uh, there is gonna be volatility for sure. Some storms, but I I don't see it as, you know, civil war coming or things like that. Mm-mm, oh, me all. neither. But but to add to what is going on with the October eclipse, Mars is in a sign ruled by the moon. Mars yes. is in, a, it, it's, it's being ruled by a feminine influence and one that is completely underneath conscious thought. It's just there. It's what's in your body. It's from the womb. So there's yes. a, a, a potentially non-thinking, but definitely feminine focused uh streak in whatever mars is up to right now and and i find it fascinating that at this moment in time we have an absolute dichotomy of the male relation to family mars in cancer one is i control i'm going to do everything and you sit over there and be quiet and one is uh, a man who's standing, who gave his career up to stand next to a powerful woman and yes. who actually has such a good, has a good enough relationship with his ex-wife that she's helping the current <laughs> wife. Yeah. What, in what universe has that been happening? And then we also have a, a absolute dad energy, committed mm-hmm. family dad energy. So I'm going to say that the two presidential tickets in the United States are modeling extremes of the potential of mars in cancer and with this eclipse in libra the feminine's gonna win out oh definitely and and one of my favorite you know planets which i which is a dwarf planet is what some people call asteroid series she's um opposing mars on this eclipse as well in the sign of capricorn and capricorn is the structures that we live under to a degree as well and we've seen all the structures kind of all the reveals of what's not working in the structures of our own lives and the greater lives and Ceres is um out of bounds more wildly out of bounds which oh, means I didn't realize that oh yeah she at the moment she's more out of bounds than i've ever i can't find any time she was but she is related to the moon energy as well she's kind of uh, like the grandmother moon in a way kind of thing mm-hmm. the great mother uh she also represents um she you know over the earth like the grain the harvest so you know bringing us back to potential water events storms that may bring some 
uh, problems. But she's opposing Mars, that Mars in Cancer that's moon ruled as well. You know, for want of a better word, the patriarchy is just dying. It's, it's, I almost feel like the bubble's gone out of it already. You know, when you talked about the other, the dynamic, you know, coming from um, the side that wants to like hold on to power over and dominate a culture and all that kind of thing, they're just what their words say. It just sounds hollow and empty now. It's like it's gone almost. Yeah. So there could be some overboard in attempt to hang oh. on to stuff that people do not free. Do not free. Do not, no. <laughs> do not free. And don't fear eclipses. You know, I, I oh, also no. I also believe we're co-creators with the cosmos and how we respond and react to it helps bring in possibilities and potential but that's how i work <laughs> so as we near the as we near the end of our time do you have any like overarching wrapping up words about the shift over in the eclipse family is there anything about eclipses or this fall just this is this is one of the biggest ones i've seen in you know the whole time i've been looking at eclipses not just because of the eclipses, but because of those as well. And uh, but do know that it launches you know, something that unfolds over time. So whilst things might happen very close to the eclipses, it's it's what's coming after that really is the potential. The revelations are probably going to be uh, just mind blowing. I oh. honestly think. I think so. And it's coming so close to the election here, you know. The new moon eclipse is just five weeks before the eclipse, before the election. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well. Well, so uh, let's talk a little bit more about what you're up to or where people can find you, what you do. We have a few minutes for that. Oh, well, so you know me. I'm prolific. <laughs> I'm always doing things. I write on Substack. Pro prolifically i run classes courses i have a membership uh, a youtube channel uh, cosmic owl astrology you can find me everywhere um i'm running a master class teaching the venus star point and that does bring me back to the eclipses actually a little bit because right, i work with the venus star point work and in october we had the first libra venus star point that's going to be in play for over 100 years and we're just in the last Mars ruled ones before we move into a Pisces Venus star point. So that brings me back to the eclipse as well. We are moving into a Venus time period in so many ways. <laughs> oh, no, that's a that's a beautiful one I didn't know about. Um, mm -hmm. So, OK, uh, what is your sub stack? It's Cosmic Owl uh, Astrology sub stack, Cosmic Owl Astrology and uh youtube cosmic owl astrology uh, facebook page cosmic owl astrology my website is louiseddington.com <laughs> uh -huh. so, what's with the owl <laughs> you just like owls no palace athena the asteroid is exactly conjunct uh, my, I'm sorry. my jupiter which is my ruling planet and um well um, that's just so obvious it makes all the sense in the world <laughs> yes yeah, and I've always liked owls. So, <laughs> but, so yeah. and this fall, do you have any uh, September, October, November? You have any any classes, any programs, any projects people can find? Yeah, I'm teaching a master class um, an hour after we record this, so this will be gone by the time this ends. But, um, right. but I will uh, be. I'm actually going to be offering a a free thing in November. I'd like. I'm not going to say what it is yet, but um, I want to, you know, just watch this space. Maybe sign up for my newsletter. It's going to be wonderful, and I'm actually going to talk to Kathy about it afterwards. Oh, and, good. And then I I do a Venus retrograde class every Venus retrograde, which is every um, 19 months. That, that 19 years eclipse cycle 19 months venus venus cycle is fascinating and that's coming up starting in february but it's a big class and it's very powerful um so if people want to know more about that there's a wait list for that too. so 
a wait list. Oh boy. That's mm. excellent. Well, thank you. And also just uh, Louise has great, great stuff on her uh, mm -hmm. Facebook page for Cosmic Al. Hysterical <laughs> memes. So please, they just, yeah, oh, yeah. follow. Because follow, follow. I, I love to have fun as well. So, you know, right. I like uh -huh. I post, I post the, the pop memes just to lighten the mood a little bit sometimes as well. People get so serious. Well, I and thank you so boy. much. <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much for coming back and, and having this long conversation with me. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, everybody, stay <laughs> grounded and use your uh, logical mind and then also give yourself over to vast inspiration. How's that? We're all in this together. Uh, for me, you can find me at empowermentunlimited.net. I have weekly uh, moon and monthly forecasts. They are also at omtimes.com minus the weekly podcast and mm. on my YouTube channel, Professional Aquarian. And my Patreon is patreon.com uh, slash Kathy Beal, uh, where I have um, a monthly Ask Me Almost Anything. And uh, we look at charts. We do whatever people want to talk about. And uh, new feature, dad jokes. So uh thanks everyone uh, oh and we are, we are planning something too by the way yes yeah, so and we are planning something too so just watch what's going to be going on between the two of us and a uh another co-conspirator so uh yeah. everyone be safe thanks very very much and i'll talk to you again soon bye thanks kathy <laughs>